live. Welcome everyone out there in YouTube land to another episode of the Tom Salta Masterclass live series. This happens every month where I will go live and answering the questions of those who have signed up for any of my various masterclasses, which are available at TomSalta.com slash masterclass. So I'd like to welcome here today. We have a bunch of folks here. Uh, Oleg, Toby, Deborah, Catherine, Chris, Frost, and Pablo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're going to have some fun today. And uh, as we have done in the past, we're going to be uh, talking about various topics. And I'm going to start by digging into some of the uh, uh, submissions that you have sent me. Uh, so we'll take a listen together and I'll try my best to give you some constructive feedback on it to help improve your craft. All right. Uh, let's see. So before we uh, start, if you are watching this, please hit the like button now and please subscribe as this will help reach more and more people of similar interests uh, get these, uh, these videos. We want to reach out to as many people as we can because this really, this very uh, invaluable uh, educational content is here free uh, for people to watch. So please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Uh, and also, as I put in the description, um, there are some discounts to those of you who have uh, have any interest in taking any of those masterclass courses. They are right there in the description. You can use those codes and get 20% off. Uh, thank you, Chris, for putting those in there. And uh, also, I want to point out that uh, anyone who has purchased any of my courses are entitled to huge discounts on various sample libraries and software and hardware companies. Things like CineSamples and Artoria um, and, and uh, Heaviosity and, and many others, Audio Ali. So please check them out. These are available all year round and they more than pay for themselves uh, if you purchase any of these courses. So it's a huge uh, offering that a lot of people don't even realize. They're like, really? Wait, I get that? Yes, you do. Okay, uh, cool. So anyway, uh, before we uh, start into some of the critiques, I just wanted to, again, welcome my students here. Hello to all of you. And uh, I want to start by throwing out the usual question. Uh, what are you guys struggling with right now that you'd like to throw out and maybe have me give a shot at or 
or discuss to get other, other people's thoughts. What are some of the challenges that you are struggling with or dealing with right now in your composing circles? And it could be technology, it can be career related, it can be anything. Toby, talk to us. Hi. Hi. Um, hello. Uh, time management and um, riding the creative wave. Yes. So to speak, which actually, I have to say, uh, quick plug for your courses, Tom. Um, <laughs> since doing the uh, Game Music Essentials course, um, I've massively improved in that department. You do, you, you do provide some s seriously useful tips. Thank you. On that front. Yeah, I'm glad it was valid. Um, and so, um, on that. But it's still, um, I have a young son. And we're we're busy. Yep. Um, so it's just about trying to like capitalize on the time. Yes. That I do have. Which, and energy. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And um, um, and that, that kind of a thing, really. Um, so if there's anything that you can add to what yes. was in the course, that would be um, that would be. Yeah. I'd find that very really helpful. A absolutely. And uh, you are not alone. We all deal with this. This is a constant. Uh, struggle, um, I think, of time management, uh, particularly for creative professionals uh, and those of us who are trying or want to really balance uh, or try to have any kind of life where it's not just one thing all the time. I mean, that's a, I think that's a struggle across the board for, for any creative. Um, so my uh, advice to you and to myself is to be disciplined and um, really take your time and cherish your time and take it seriously and and make sure you do your best to avoid distractions okay um so that means everything from blocking things out on your calendar to say i'm going to work on this only i'm going to work on one thing and 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 one thing only uh for the next hour or the next three hours or whatever it is uh, I think I do mention, I'm not sure, but, uh, you know, I, I speak of a method like the Pomodoro method, which I kind of yeah. used years ago to kind of help change my way of, of focused, ultra focused attention for a set period of time. And, uh, and then you give yourself a deliberate break, no matter whether you feel like taking the break or not. And this tends to create this kind of rhythm which works almost like a marathon in terms of giving you long ed longevity. Okay, 25 minutes on, five minutes off, do that three times, then take a 20 minute break and you find that you get so much more done. So do one thing at a time, schedule everything. I really, really live by my calendar. I think I showed this uh, not only in Game Music Essentials, but also in the Mental Survival Talk, which is free to everybody. If you haven't watched it, please watch it. Uh, and I show how it really takes the burden off uh, of me as far as trying to keep all this stuff in my head, uh, and it tells me what I'm gonna work on. And it really helps give me a, a sense of accomplishment because I know that the things that I see on my calendar, I actually did, and I'm doing. And it's like, okay, that was my plan today. I accomplished it. You ever get that feeling at night where it's like, oh, I didn't. I just feel like I didn't do anything today. You know, some <laughs> of that might be true, but some of that I think has something to do with the fact that you kind of don't really keep track of what you're doing. Um, so set boundaries. So th that's one of the, yeah. the, the quick things I, I would say to you. Good, good question there. Chris, you have a question for us. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, um, kind of dovetailing on to what uh, Toby said, got me thinking about financial management. Yes. Because you can have, months, <laughs> you know, you'd have a great month where you, you know, you've got some money coming in, and you think to yourself, oh, I could afford that Spitfire library at last. Yeah. So then you can last <laughs> three months and not have anything. Yeah. So um, do you apportion a part of it and think I'm gonna only use this much, I'm gonna save it because I don't know when my next lot's coming in? I mean, what's your advice on financial management when working in government? Yeah, I mean, you know, disciplining your, your finances are uh, also really, really critical, uh, of course. That goes without saying. Um, what I tend to do, uh, if things are going into a phase where things are kind of getting tight or there's a little bit more space in between the jobs that kind of pay up front, 
or you know there there's there's a little dry period i mean i don't care what level you're working on it's always going to be doing this you know it might be doing it up here or it might be doing it down here or whatever but it's going to do this you know there's never like this perfect steady flow so what i'd say is you know if you if if you make a thousand dollars on something i think it's i think it's fair to take a hundred dollars of that and reinvest it in in your craft you know take 10 percent and reinvest it um but don't go too crazy don't take 50 percent. don't take a hundred percent and reinvest it unless unless you you have other money that is you know unless you're in a situation a life situation where the money you bring in is not required for you to live you know it's just superfluous you know if you if you if you have a partner for example that has a full-time job and it's bringing in the the big bucks and you know you're just on top of that great congratulations um but if it's the opposite of that i mean you really have to manage and uh you know again when you have a let's say uh you know family or a home or you know you're gonna find that the, the priorities are, are really important and you gotta you gotta focus on putting food on the table before you focus on putting a new sound library on the table um, you know one thing that I have to keep constantly remind myself is don't don't fool yourself into thinking that uh, you don't have what you need to make music um, you know this I was making some great stuff 20 years ago <laughs> you know, and uh, if if I had to stop it there and use the tools that I had, I would be doing just great. So it, it, it's not the tools that you have. Uh, sure, you know, new libraries can be very inspiring and helpful, but you got to learn to really use what you have and not be tempted into that thought like, oh, well, if I just bought this one more thing, then I'm going to have what I need because then you get it <laughs> and then you just think, Again, it's, oh, if I get this one next thing, I'll, I'll, then I'll have what I need. You don't. Use what you have. Some of the most creative best stuff I ever made was when I had just one keyboard back in 1986. You know, and I learned, I knew every one of the 64 sounds that were on that thing. You know, so use what you have. Understand that setting boundaries and limitations uh, leads to uh, creativity. So It reminded so. me of uh, Steve Martin in The Jerk. Have you ever seen that? Yes, but which part are you referring to? I forget. Yeah, this chair. That's all I need. And this chair and this rug. That's all I need. It goes right. Like that. And then it keeps going up from there and there and there. And that happens to all of us. It's human nature, right? Great question. Good reminders. And uh, all right. Cool. So why don't we uh, start into our critiquing section? And uh, I'm going to take some of the stuff that has been uploaded. Uh, the first uh, submission that we have today is from Pablo. Pablo, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's okay, up? great. Cool, cool, cool. So, uh, okay, good. I see you. Excellent. All right, cool. Oh, you got the dog, but that's okay. So tell me, what are we listening to and what would you like me to focus on today? It's a very short sound design of an electric... My electrical uh, plasma machine gun. How would it sound in the game? That's it. It's very short, like five seconds. Oh, See wow. We're g getting some sound design. How would it sound in a game? Yeah. Yeah, and it was all Moog. It was all synth stuff. Now, what I'm looking at, tell me if I'm looking at the wrong thing. Ah, yes. I think I am. Okay, so here we go. Energy machine. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Let me guess. Use the Moog for this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, obviously that uh, first of all, disclaimer, I'm not a sound designer. Okay, but yeah. I've worked enough in games to understand a lot of things about the way sound design works. Uh, first and foremost, you can't just say, oh, this is going to work great in a game or no, this isn't going to work great in a game. That, that's too wide of an open field. What kind of game? What kind of sounds are in the game? What's the context of the sound? Um, so instead of me saying what it wouldn't work for, why don't I say what it would work for? Okay, and let's use our imagination for a second. Maybe we close our eyes. Okay, first of all, it, it has a, you know, a very, um, dare I say, old-fashioned kind of 
you know, synth sound because if you were we're talking about synth sounds that you could easily have heard in the late '60s. We're talking about a a, a Moog synthesizer that's using traditional, you know, synth sound sources, saw waves, sine waves, and things like that. And you know, how many of these little wacko wacko, you know, laser beamy kind of things have we heard? Um, it's 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 a big sound. It's long, so it's not going to serve as a a single shot of any kind. It's going to be some kind of mega weapon, in my opinion. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, maybe if you took one of those, you know, that would work for maybe a throwback retro arcade kind of game where, you know, kind of like a, a, a modern looking asteroids or Robotron or something like that. Just one of those. But again, it, pew, pew, pew. I mean, that's that's so overused. It's a, it's a stereotype. They even have a pew. I mean, it's like a thing. You could type it out and you know the sound. So uh, not original, but sometimes an oldie and a goodie can work in the right con- uh, situation. That is my two cents. Uh, do, awesome. I, do any sound designers uh, here want to uh, add on to that feedback? Anyone? Okay. All right, cool. So let's uh, let's go to that. Thanks a lot for submitting that, Pablo. Thank you. All right, cool. Great. All right, cool. So next on the list, we have Oleg. Hey, welcome, Oleg. This is your first time here joining us on Masterclass Live. So welcome. So tell us what mm. are we going to be listening to today? Uh, so uh, this is a trailer music. Uh, it's a work in progress. Uh-huh. It's not finished yet. And uh, my biggest concern is that it's not really typical trailer. It's uh, vocal based. Uh, so how can I improve it for a horror game trailer? A horror That's game trailer. That's my question. Mm-hmm. OK, great. And it's uh, it's based uh, the is based on uh on the lore of the game one of the characters is the witch and that's why it's uh it has so much like female vocals got it so you're saying this is a trailer for a video game yeah that's right understood okay i don't and if this is a real video game i take it that you're not allowed to say what it is is that correct oh i can't say you can (laughs) say what it is because that would also help some context okay oh it's um like a typical horror survival okay a guy enters like a bad situation and he uh wants to get out of their life okay <laughs> basically in weird locations and different animal uh different enemies great all right let's take a listen hmm? i've got this nightmare again soft Good. 
<laughs> and then a final maybe at the end. Okay. That was really fun. That was really, really fun. Um, so my thoughts on this one. Um, I think you did the most valuable part already, which is coming up with a memorable, freaky, weird, melodic thing that works in a horror trailer. That is not easy to do. Okay? So the vocal, if I had that to work on, that would be like a cakewalk. Because now all that's needed is to make the production sound current and big. All right? And what do I mean by that? So, if you're if you're playing something like that, all the booms and the, the, the percussion just needs to be bigger. More layers. You know what I'm saying? This is where Heaviosity would be your friend right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Various libraries that they have. And don't forget about the discounts that we have through Masterclass series. <laughs> I forgot what the yes, discount is. Yes, and I is. just got the Heaviosity drum kit like a couple of days ago. Right. And I saw your review. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, cool. Heaviosity drum kit is fantastic. If you want a mm -hmm. drum kit, because that's really like the big thing that's really been missing from their offerings. Uh, so now if you just want a drum kit. But, I mean, this kind of stuff... I would do more than a drum kit. This is the kind of stuff that I would mm -hmm. have layered ensemble percussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> got it. Just a freaking mm -hmm. so everything just exaggerate it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like every, do you ever edit photos and play around with colors and everything? You know, mm -hmm. it's like turning the saturation up. Okay. So got it. The bass is bigger, boomier. The the percussion mm -hmm. boomer boom. The rises more intense. Everything. Mm -hmm. But don't make sure that you don't kill those vocals. It's, 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 mm -hmm. You can have sounds that are big and not overbearingly loud. Okay. It's amazing when you can do it right. You can have things that sound humongous even on a little phone and you can just hear them and hear the vocal clearly over it. But it's just the mm -hmm. layers and the density of it. So that mm -hmm. I think would be the biggest thing that this really needs. And if you have okay. any doubts or any, you want to kind of compare that to anything, just go on to YouTube or go on to your favorite trailer website and start mm -hmm. listening to what's current. Mm -hmm. And that's really going to help guide you. But you're you're there, man. I mean, it's it's just okay. literally just stuff, the right sound. So good job on that. Re really okay. nice. Thank you so much, Tom. You My pleasure. It. My pleasure. Thanks. Great, great. All right, cool. So let's get the next one ready here. If anyone has any questions, don't forget you can raise your hand. And those of you watching on YouTube, if you have questions out there, um, feel free to ask in the chats, and I'll and I'll do my best to kind of uh, get to them. All right. Excellent. All right. So next up, we have Toby. How you doing, Toby? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm well, thanks. Good. Sorry if there's, if there's a light buzzing in the background. It's, um, I've got a two-inch hornet came into the room and I've got it under a cup. Is it a death uh, hornet? <laughs> mm hmm Is it a death hornet? I mean, it, it looks like it, yeah. Two like inches? It looks, it looks like it's, it's from uh, another planet. Seriously, it's terrifying. Oh, but my God. Take, take some photos of that thing. Where do you live? <laughs> um, in Hungary. Woo! Because I know the uh, death hornets made their way out of Japan. But there's people in Japan that have, like, hornets on, like, a leash. I'm serious. They have them as pets. <laughs> I've seen people have these things on a leash, and it's, like, this big. I'm like, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's terrifying. That's, like, Jurassic Park stuff. Um, yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, it's not one of those, thankfully. But okay. it's massive, and it's got a big face and everything. Um yeah, anyway, so... <laughs> <coughs> All right, Excuse then. me. So it's interesting you were saying about um, use use what you what you have already and don't get sucked into this keep, this this mindset where you feel like you keep needing more things. Um, I was, I, I had a small amount of time with which to just play around and I thought instead of doing my normal thing, which is opening up my usual synths, I realized that there's a lot of omnisphere that i haven't quite explored yet and i've had it for Lucky a while you. um yeah and um i thought oh, i'll just play around with something and i i 
it didn't really have a purpose, but I figured it would be um, either an exploration layer or like a, a sort of menu backdrop for some sort of bleak horror game. It's, yes. it's fairly, um, it's just sort of atmospheric, but um, yeah, I did it, I did it quite quickly. Um, and I'm, I'm quite pleased. And I just want to know, does it, maybe not after hearing what we've just heard, I, I feel <laughs> like a bit insecure about it, but um, okay, yeah. does it inspire the requisite feeling of, of dread um, and bleakness for uh, like like a, a sort of nondescript horror game? Sure. Generic. Well, let's horror take game. a listen dread to it. Dread is what we're going for. And uh... um, mystery. Okay. Keep in mind one thing. There's one thing that you said which is absolutely not true. You said that there's no use for it or not useful or something to that effect or no purpose or yeah. whatever. Um, oh, no, I mean, I didn't have a brief. I was just um, okay. improvising. Because that's what the, I the practice of doing that and exploring sounds, it's it's very uh, useful and... and um, it's a great thing to do, especially when you don't have anything to do. <laughs> when you're not working, go ahead and go yeah. through and start exploring your sounds. You know? Okay, so let's take a, a look and, and see what you got. Thank you. All right, here we go. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly the purpose. I mean, first of all, this is a perfect example of many things. One is how fun and and useful ex exploration stuff can be. You should now have already saved that idea and put it in an ideas folder that you would call, you know, something like, you know, ambient, scary, hybrid, industrial, synthy idea, whatever it is, so that when you need it, you can kind of call it back. Um, sure, that could work easily as a as a menu screen. That could work as in-game. It, it it depends, whatever. Um, cool. Uh, I, do, I do have um, uh, a tension layer as well. Um, cool. But that was that was um, more of an afterthought, I guess. Yeah, well, um, that's fine. Perhaps, it, it, perhaps I, I might add a few more layers to it, and in a future um, session. Sure, but maybe right yeah. now, until you have a place, a, dis, a distinct need for it, or 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 context to put it in, don't you know? You don't have to worry about tension layers and what have you. I mean, that's certainly good practice and and things to do for yourself, but. You know, the thing yeah. is, you got this idea, and I bet you that if you continued exploring in the same way you just did with that, uh, you might come up with 10 or 20 more of those good ideas uh, in a day. Who knows? If you have a lot Sweet. of fun. that, And that's, by the way, a, a very good use of your time. Um, yeah. You know, it, one, it familiarizes yourself with your, with your gear and with your, with your tools. Um, you know, you can in, in Omnisphere. I particularly like that synth because you can really um, label things the way you want them. You can you can use stars. You can rename them. You can tag them. You can categorize them. You can do all that kind of stuff so that when you do need it, when you are up against the clock, 
uh, you can um, uh, work much faster. Okay, so really good. Really good. Cool. I, I love it. It's great. Oh, thank you very much. I love and thank you, everyone else, for your comments. That's really encouraging. Yeah. And one thing to always keep in mind, I don't care what synth it is, even even something like Omnisphere, which is so customizable, make sure that any sound you use isn't just a factory sound by itself or whatever. Tweak it, make it your own. It's not that hard to do. Uh, you can, oh, add, um, you know. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. In, I, I should be fair to our friends at Heaviosity. Um, there's a woodwind designer as well on there. Uh, There's a woodwind designer. Yeah, so the 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 omnisphere is like just pure atmos, reasonably atonal, um, and then the tonal stuff is. Um, oh, okay. So you have two is, different is, sounds in there. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Cool. Great. Um, thank great, you very much. Great stuff. My pleasure. Of course. All right. Excellent. So let's take a look. Any questions so far? And let's see on YouTube there. Hello there. What trailer is uh, Oleg Song from? Uh, I'm not sure if Oleg can say, but you're welcome to if you're allowed. Just don't get in trouble. No, no, no. Uh, the game is uh, called Dark Knot. Dark Knot. Dark Knot. Yeah. Great. And it's been under development and will be in early access this fall. Okay. You heard it here first, folks. Mm -hmm. Dark Knot. Excellent. Thank you very much, Oleg. All right, cool. So Thanks. let's see uh, what else we have. Right in here. Catherine, you are up. What do you got for us today? Um, well, today I decided to, well, I'm trying to dip my toes into waters that are like are out of my normal Good. thing. Good. Yes. So, uh, so this is kind of like happy. <laughs> I know it's like normally I do the dark stuff. Normally anyway, I'm not happy. Uh, so this is kind of like uh, WandaVision kind of vibe, 50s kind of like sitcom, like adventure kind of thing. It's very short. So I wanted to kind of like use what I had. I'm not really great with using strings or things that are not guitar and, and ominous sounding things. So um, that's what I got. I decided to kind of go into this little realm and just experiment but it's kind of like, I was thinking of WandaVision, like a 50s kind of sitcom style thing or that kind of thing. You got me curious. All right, let's take a listen. Let's see what we got. Just go back and get them. <laughs> okay, cool. So yes, mission accomplished. You certainly did something very happy, and and that's great. And I'd say, you know what? It's sometimes for for a lot of us folks, it's not the easiest thing to do. Not that we are always depressed all the time, but. It, it, it's it's often just not in fashion or style or needed and we don't practice it enough um, so from my experience when I'm listening to that there there I, I do have one suggestion as far as how to um, better deliver that kind of sound that sounds a little bit more expensive rather than um, you know kind of cheap in the box little sounds that that anybody would have you know cheap sounding stuff um the one of the things that you got to kind of keep in mind when you're using sounds like this right they are all close sounds those remind me a lot of the kind of sounds that you would find in a roland you know 
1080 from 1995 or something like that, or whatever it came out. You know, a lot of the kind of sounds that were in the box, they were they're good quality recordings, but not realistic because they were just very close. And they don't, when you play them like that, they just sound cheap and toy-ish, right? Now, sometimes that might be what is needed. Maybe if the, let's say for, I would, I would picture something more like a, like a little, you know, 8-bit looking top-down video game-ish kind of happy RPG game uh, than a WandaVision. Uh, maybe stylistically, mood-wise WandaVision, but it doesn't come across that way in my opinion. Uh, it, it comes across more like a, you know, like a, I hate using the words low budget and cheap because they sound like I'm bashing it, but I'm, I'm saying that just as a descriptive tool. Um, mm -hmm. Again, more like a, a, an 8-bit game where you're kind of limited to the kind of sounds that were in the little synth built into the little chip in the game, you know? Um, So when you're using sounds like this, what I recommend is you you pay particular atten particular attention to the uh, to the imaging of it. So for example, here I'm just going to throw another product out there. You, there's at you. There's one product that I know of. It's called Virtual Sound Stage. I don't use it very often, uh, but if I ever needed to kind of take a sound like this, and I didn't want to just soak it in reverb and I wanted to focus on the early reflections and put it like on a stage as if I were taking those close mics and just putting them on the stage and then re-miking it from a different position in three-dimensional space. There is a, there's a very cool plugin uh, called Virtual Soundstage. Virtual um, Soundstage. You might want to check it out. There are some other things like that um, that are out there, you know, even UAD has something called Ocean uh, Ocean Way Studios, but that's more about remiking in a smaller studio like Ocean Way uh, for vocals or guitars or drum kits. But if you want like a sound stage, virtual sound stage is kind of cool for that. It's not the only way to do it. I only learned about that a few years ago, um, perhaps, but you can also use um, uh, what are we going to call it? Or, or, you know, reverbs and convolution reverbs that are early reflection based or very small. And what you can do is take the source sound, the dry sound, back that up a lot and use a send in a pre-fader kind of way. So you're sending to the, you're sending to the effect not proportional to the level on the fader itself. This sounds complicated, it's, but it's, it's not. Uh, and what that, what that does is it, it allows the signal to go to the reverb independent of the level of your volume, of your direct sound. And okay. that can also give the illusion of a three-dimensional space. You know, The way they used to do it back in the day is they would just re-mic a sound. They would just take it play it through a speaker in another room, set up a microphone and re-record it. And now you have that sound that sounds more three-dimensional. That's cool. Okay? Hmm. Yeah. But that's that's just one technique of many that you could use in a context like this to, to make it sound a little bit more three-dimensional um, and less in the box, if that makes sense. Totally. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, I was just experimenting out of my my little box and trying to you know use oh uh, I mean, oh and and, and yeah. when you say the little box what are we what what box were you talking about uh i have a sample tank ah, and, okay and um mirror logic um mirrors, no, the, i can't remember i have a i have like a string library so i was kind of like using the uh the low bass the double cello double right. bass from uh -huh. there and then um i can't remember where i was using the strings from but Anyway. But in any so case, they all like sound like they are similar in. I mean, actually, those when I hear them, when I hear those, it's it's kind of nice. They do kind of have a nice little grit to them. But in the context of everything else, it sounds kind of cheap. Like here, like this is. I mean, that reminds me of you know Zelda Ocarina of Time, right? Yeah. Okay. And and the sounds from Ocarina of Time were coming from 
MIDI triggering in the game in the in the cartridge. They basically like the sounds, the samples themselves were there. That's how they got so many minutes of music, right? So you don't want it to have to sound like that unless you're going after a, you know, a throwback retrospective sound. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I, like I said, for me, I was just thinking, oh, maybe 50s WandaVision. I was just thinking of that and just experimented out of my box, and that's what I came up with. So thank you for the feedback. That's gotcha. Awesome. It sounds, sounds cool. Yeah. But it was fun. It was positive, and, and I think you have a knack for it. So keep writing some more stuff. I will. Cool. Great. Excellent. All right, good. So uh, th those are all the submissions that we have for today. Um, so now we can go into the next phase, which is to either answer some more questions or do some kind of demonstration of a, of a certain kind of thing that we can kind of talk about. I can kind of pull something random out of out of my recent uh, creations or things like that. But does anyone have any questions uh, either here, here or on YouTube? What's up, St. Marks? What's up? Uh, how about over here? Pablo, you have a question for us. Talk to me. Yeah, question. Um, how do you land your first gig? <laughs> like there's one way to do that, right? How do you learn your land your first gig? Well, that's a pretty open-ended question uh, because, one, we can define gig in several different ways. What is a gig? You know, is a gig something that you get paid for creating something? You could be working for someone else. Good, good one. You know, I mean. Yeah, I think probably, yeah, I think mostly professionally exposure, not necessarily paid for. Yeah, well, well, first of all, you know, I would say that, that you know, generally speaking, if there's going to be a gig, Right? How do you land your first gig? It kind of does imply that you are getting paid. And I think you should. I'm not an advocate of anyone doing anything for free. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that it always has to be just money. But there does need to be some kind of equal exchange of, of energy or some kind of either some kind of bartering situation or partial payment with some other compensation that goes along with it. There's many ways to do that. But I digress. How do you land your first gig? I can come up with many ways, and I'm going to ask some of you here if you want to help answer this question. Think of five ways that you can land your first gig or how how you have landed or know of people landing their first gigs. Okay, here, I'm just going to brainstorm. Ways you can land your first gig. One, uh, helping someone else out as a as a assistant or a programmer or, or an arranger or, uh, you know, helping someone out who has a who has the gig who has the 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 main client you can actually be providing a service you can be a session musician you know again landing your first gig as what <laughs> as a composer as a programmer as a as a what you know there's many roles you can land your first gig and there's many ways to do so um so that that's really an open ended question but i i want to throw it out to to the group here Tell me some ways that you landed. Chris, with you, tell me some ways you land your first gig. Uh, well, a, a recent gig came up just purely from a post on social media. Social media is a great way of uh, finding gigs, and that includes LinkedIn as well. Mm -hmm. People underestimate LinkedIn, but actually there's plenty that can be found on LinkedIn. But um, one I recently found was through um, film scoring on um, Facebook. Um, somebody put a post out there and there was another one where somebody posted that they wanted somebody who could do sounds not necessarily for game they said it wasn't game related but it implied that it was for a cell phone so it might have been an ad or something so social media there's plenty to be found if if you add, you know add as many groups and pages as you can very cool anyone else who else is what Catherine what Tell me about landing, landing your gig. Uh, well, part of it was, uh, well, through networking, through through the fact that I perform a lot, especially in Boston, I was working with people that went into film. And through that, um, you know, I did a, a number of like, you know, films and through that people got to know me. So I was asked by people I didn't know to like, and this is more in the film world, you know, to score their indie films. So, and through that, I also, you know, was, um, 
let's see, referred to someone who's kind of a very well-known person mm -hmm. who was looking for something. And uh, they were working with their daughter on a film, and they picked me to be the composer for that. So we'll see what happens with mm -hmm. that. But, but so these are just some ways. But it's like it's it was through networking and, um, uh, you know, mostly through the social media and uh, through word of mouth uh, that I got that that sort of thing. So great. One way. Uh, does anyone else want to? Oleg, did you raise your hand? Please share. And maybe sometimes game jams, if you want to get into game development, mm -hmm. like you can find lots of game jams. They are going on like almost all year round and you can build your portfolio, your resume, and then reach out to the companies. Great. Really good stuff, everyone. Mm -hmm. So how, how's that there, Toby? Mm -hmm. No, it's incredibly informative. Oh, I'm sorry. I said Toby. I meant Pablo. I'm looking. I'm looking. Pablo's image just went off the screen there. Sorry. So yeah, Pablo. There are a lot of ways. Yeah, that to, was super cool. To do that, and um, and of course, depending on the nature of the gig, uh, but uh, you'd be surprised how you can get it. Uh, one of the things is you've got to keep showing up. You got to be out there in multiple places doing multiple things. Put your music out there. Uh, I'm, I I love the expression that, to play the cards that you're dealt. You know, so focus on what you do well and say, okay, well, I'm good at, I'm good at making all these little scary pieces of music. So why don't I create a little library of those? Or why don't I put them on my SoundCloud? Or why don't I look for ways to place them? Why don't I try to see if I can get with a publisher uh, and things like that? And you, you need exposure because if no one knows you, what you, what you do, no one knows you're around, no one knows you exist and you can't get hired. So probably the most important thing about getting your first gig and uh, and I can't believe I didn't say this first is networking and networking is a is a is a cold word for the term of making relationships getting out there connecting connecting with people that's really how you're going to get your first gig it's connecting with people that's it plain and simple can I, can I put another one in, Tom? Of course you can. can. Thank you. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I ever heard was, I think, from Mason Lieberman. Uh, when I Sorry, my audio school. went out. Can't hear. Oops. Okay. Um, and he said, you know, don't discount the other people that are around you at this conference that are at your level, because one day they might be in a position to hire you too. And that ended up being absolutely true, because through Tom's masterclass... Sorry about that. Sorry. You're eating, but my audio went out. Okay, you can mute. You can mute Pablo. Yep. I, I found Go ahead, Chris. several um, game projects through Tom's masterclass because of other students, um, right. and still to this day, a, a couple of them said, "Here's a gig that might be appropriate for you," and I'm like, "Awesome, thanks." So yeah, as Tom <laughs> says, networking, and and I've actually I've probably done about five projects through yeah. um, students that I've met through Tom. Yeah, and that's amazing. I mean. And that's ex exactly what we're talking about here is just make those connections and make those relationships. And eventually, if you know what you want to do, if you know what you're after, you, you start to manifest this kind of stuff. I'm a big believer in the um, in the uh, uh, Pablo. And also you can mute your mic microphone cases because there is background sound coming through. Uh, but I would encourage anyone here uh, after you after this or whenever is to go on YouTube and, and Google the law of attraction. And there's, you, you'll hear many different people and there's many books on it and things like that, but I'm a huge believer in that. And uh, in short, uh, it's all about manifesting uh, what you want and how the, the universe will just kind of arrange things to just happen at the right time in the right way as long as you expect them and as long as you have a clear idea and you focus on the gratitude and focus on seeing it happen uh, it's going it will happen because thoughts are things thoughts are can do actually turn into physical things and if you really want to get geeky about it thoughts are things they are they are waves and electrons and 
things. It's hard to kind of understand it, but it does exist. It will turn into something real. Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it, you know? And it sounds very like, yeah, sure, but it's actually true. So um, it's amazing. It's amazing to see how, how you will get your first gig and, uh, you know, and then you can share your story. Yeah. I'm just a beginner, but I'm very curious about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it will happen. Keep doing what you're doing. You've been doing some amazing work. All right. Great. So uh, we probably have time for one or two more things or <clears throat> anything. Does anyone have anything they want to kind of throw out to me here? Let me just make sure I don't miss any windows here. Cool. Um, <clears throat> goodness gracious, I have to grab my 32-ounce cup. Mm. Hydration, very important. All right. Cool. Um I have a bunch of questions here that people have asked me uh, over the years, and maybe I can pull out one of these things and see if they resonate with any of, any of you. Um, how have your passion projects helped you? Hmm, that's interesting. Does anyone here raise your hand if you've if you've done or wanted to do a passion project? Anyone? Well, it hasn't I, happened yet. Chris has got a finger up. It's kind of like, <laughs> sort of. I've always wanted to do a point and click. But I've never had the opportunity to okay. do it. Okay. Toby, I see a hand going up there. All right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to do um, an animation um driven by music mm -hmm. so uh, almost like the that daft punk album that was a video discovery five 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 yeah. um but like animation is a, a very sort of new skill set okay um, so and so i'm trying to i'm trying to just like well i'm much more advanced in in like um composition and electronic music side of things than i am with that um gotcha. so that is something that I'd, I'd, I'd love to do i have i have an ep that has a story but has no picture um that's like a self-released ep um and if i go back to it now there's, there's so much about it that i want to change but i feel that it, it's helped me hone my sound yes um which and I think is I I think as creative people, we if you keep going back and looking at old things, you're always gonna find something to good. I'm glad you critique. mentioned that, Toby. Uh, you talk about honing your sound, and that's pretty much what one of the things, one of the benefits uh, of doing passion projects. It helps you hone your sound. Uh, it helps you keep the flow of creativity going because it can become stagnant. And uh, that has a lot of uh, uh, bad uh, effects, even psychologically, uh, because we lose momentum and we kind of forget that we can do we can do stuff. So if you if you it's important to kind of keep your your creative juices going um, and to keep being prolific and making stuff. And uh, passion projects are great because they remind you why you do what you do and what you love to do, and they can turn into something beyond just a passion project. Isn't it great to have a passion project that turns into an actual paid thing and an actual commercial release? <laughs> you know? Um, Absolutely. It, that, that's wonderful. And it works. I just did a passion project called The Sleep Project. All right? And uh, it, it ended up being released on Decca Records. And it was part of a compilation that went to number, number eight on the Billboard classical music for relaxation list uh and it's opened up a whole nother world for me of stuff that i'm going to be doing uh, in in that world i'm going to be releasing more and more music it, it specifically intended for relaxation for meditation um for sleep um and i think it, it's good i think it's good not only for me and therapeutic for me but it's helping so many people uh and so when you have a desire to do something creatively, do it. There's a reason for it. Everything has a purpose. 
Um, cool. All right. So one last question. Uh, we're going to end with you, Catherine. Uh, talk to me. Oh, this is about passion projects. Oh, go That's ahead. One of the things. Yeah. So I did. A, I wanted to do something that was because it's like all the touring that I did in Europe. I wanted to do a thing that connected all the people that I worked with, whether it was film or mm -hmm. poetry or dance or, you know, from people from different worlds. So I did this big multimedia project uh, called Bring Isher Women. And it was a, quite a big thing because I I wanted to work with, you know, the combination of film and the background dancers. I, I worked with all these things for one for like all these different elements were present for each of the songs that I did. And I created mm -hmm. stuff with people that some didn't speak my language, but it was cool. And it was all independent, all on an indie level. But the idea was to create, connect with people to create something bigger than what I could do. And also that, you know, we're, you travel around, you meet people and you realize we kind of all are want the same things. It's just right. we're in different places. Right. So exactly. Good. Thank you very much for sharing that. Cool. All right, well, we have come to the end of yet another Masterclass Live. The hour goes by so fast. We do this every month. So just uh, just a reminder to everybody, please, if you're watching this, please hit the like button right now and subscribe and the bell so that you will not miss the next one that comes out. Uh, our, speaking of the next one, the next session will be July 6th, so Wednesday, July 6th. Same bat time, same bat channel. For those of you who are over 40, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and um, don't forget that uh, anyone who has taken any of my courses are entitled to massive discounts on a huge variety of, of great stuff uh, that's out there. So, uh, in fact, I'm going to go right now. And right now we have on board for some of our um, discounted products. Uh, let's see, right here. We have... Arturia, Cine Samples, Audio Ali, Heaviosity, XLN Audio, and Project Sam, and there's more to come. 50% and 50% off Arturia and Cine Samples and Audio Ali. That's huge. I mean, literally, you can save hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars. So uh, just by purchasing just one of my flagship courses. So don't forget that. Uh, and also, we do have the in the description on the YouTube video, we do have coupons. So if you haven't checked out, Deathloop, uh, scoring AAA Deathloop edition, and you want to learn about how I did that A to Z over seven hours of very detailed instruction on how I scored that game, uh, please check it out. And I think that is about it for now. If you want to join us here live next time, just sign up on any of the courses that I'm offering and you can come and join us for Masterclass Live. All right. Well, that is everyone. Uh, that's everything we have for today. So thank you once again, everyone, for uh, joining us. And I wanted to say goodbye to all of you there. Thank you so much. All right. I will see you all next time. Take care.